So what happens if you're driving a manual four-wheel drive like this one I've been kindly lent and you come to a hill and you don't make it all the way to the top and you need to reverse down? Well, if you get it right, then it's not going to be any problem at all. But if you don't know what to do, that could potentially be a dangerous, maybe even fatal situation. So here's the hill we're going to climb. So you can see there, it's pretty rocky and rutted. I'm going to take that GU patrol. I'm going to idle it up in first gear. We're not going to make it to the top, but I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to artificially create a failure situation. I'm going to keep driving till it can't drive any further. Then I'm going to show you what to do to back it safely down this hill. Now this process I'm going to show you is for manual 4x4 vehicles only, not automatics, and they must have low range, and they must be able to be key started, which means started with the car in gear and the clutch up, and it is for hills with traction such that the car will hold when it is stopped on the hill. So if it's a very, very slippery hill, you should not use this technique. Now you also need to practice this process until you need it and ensure that it is applicable to your vehicle. So I'm going to drive that hill pretty much at idle in first low, I'm not going to make it all the way to the top. When I fail, I'm going to demonstrate how to recover that fail in a manual car. So hands at quarter to three. You don't need to put your thumbs all the way out, I just lie them along the top of the uh, steering wheel like so. and. Pretty much just letting the car more or less idle along. I've got a, it's got a few more revs than idle, but not much more. But I'm just going to see how it goes. Now I'm using the push-pull technique here, just to, keep, just to keep the car steady. Nice even throttle movement, and just going dead straight up the hill now. We're going to stop. So the car was then uh, scrabbling for grip and I decided to fail the hill climb. First thing I've done is put my foot on the brake and that will stall the car in gear. Second thing I'm going to do is pull the park brake hard on and the third thing I'm going to do is switch the ignition off. That has now secured the car on the hill because we've stalled it in gear so we've got engine braking, park brake is on and engine's off so if the car does go backwards it's not going to start on the key. The other thing I've done is you've noticed that I've always got one hand on the steering wheel even though I'm maybe doing Doing something with the park brake or whatever else that's to stop the steering wheel turning um, from place to place as it might do I want to keep my wheels straight ahead now this clip is from an earlier run and it demonstrates the dangers of removing your hands from the steering wheel because when you take a hand off this could happen the steering wheel can turn I've even had a student have the steering wheel turned 360 degrees and not notice because they were looking at me at the time so you must keep one hand on your steering wheel at all times to ensure that you know which way it is pointed and the reason it turns is often that the wheel might be on a rock or a rut or something like that as you come to a stop now if you've used axle lockers to get up the hill, you may wish to take them out before you descend a hill for better steering or leave them in. Either way, make a conscious decision, but always have your centre diff locked if you have one. Now to come back down the hill, let's prepare for that. So first of all, we check behind, left mirror, right mirror, we can actually see behind in this car. If I had a spotter, I'd be talking to them saying, is it safe to come down? So let's just assume that it is. Now I've still got my foot on the brake at all times here. So I'm just gonna um, dip the clutch and then select sec uh, reverse gear. Clutch comes back up, car still secured. Now another check. It's all looking good, so I'm going to prepare to go back. I'm going to take the park brake off. You can hear the car start to moan and groan a bit. That's fine. And now I'm just ever so slowly going to release my foot off the brake. But I'm not going to take it off the brake completely. I'm just going to slightly cover it. So the car's now being held on engine braking. Now, again, I've still got my hand on the wheel. All I'm going to do now is just turn the car um, on, and it will just come straight down the hill like that.
Now, if I want to stop, I just turn the engine off, put my foot on the brake, the car comes to a stop. And again, I've used engine braking to do that. I haven't needed to shock load the transmission of the clutch on and off. So I want to keep going back further. So again, I'm just going to look behind me again, ignition, and back I come. And that's it. There's your manual failed hill climb process. Now, if your vehicle has electronic hill descent control, you should enable that because it is a useful safety catch if all goes horribly wrong. See this Navara here, it is an automatic, but um, never mind, we fail a hill there and it's okay, we can come back on the engine braking, but it's nice to have the extra reassurance of hill descent control as well. And if you go slow in hill descent control using the brakes, well, it just won't kick in. So I'm going to put that process on my website as well. The important thing to do is if you drive a manual vehicle is to practice it in a safe situation before you actually need it. Because when you need it, your adrenaline will be high, your emotions will be up, you'll be worried, etc. You've got to practice it till it's essential just second nature. Now some vehicles have an interlock so you cannot actually start the car in gear and if that's one of your vehicles one of those you need to know about that. You also might find that it will only start in gear in low range not in high range so don't try in high range and assume it will be the same in low range. There are other techniques for dealing with um, vehicles on hills pretty much Every type of vehicle is different. The example I've given you here will work for a lot of manual vehicles, but not all of them. And I'll cover some more examples in future videos. So I hope you found this video useful. Any questions, drop them in the comments and thanks for watching.